As a clinician, you diagnose Parkinson's disease when a structure is lesioned, called the substantia nigra, and then you identify the motor problems. And that is defined by consensus criteria. But in fact, we know now that most of the patients who suffer from Parkinson's disease have an aggregation of alpha-synuclein called alpha-synucleinopathy, the disease, and that most likely starts 15, 20, maybe even 30 years before in other areas of the body. There is a Brach hypothesis which claims that a pathogen enters streets to the brain. One is the olfactory bulb and one is the gastrointestinal system. Now to test the olfactory bulb is very simple. You test hypo, uh, olfactory function. It's more difficult to look at the gut and we have just initiated a large long-term follow-up study and the first results show if you are healthy and you eat a fried egg your stomach kicks out the egg with an amplitude of 11.2 millimeters, so it just contracts and the egg goes out. Now if you look at Parkinson patients who are de novo, that means untreated, the amplitude is 6.9. So when we diagnose Parkinson's disease, the stomach contractility is already markedly impaired. And now you look at a prodromal stage, which is called REM sleep behavior disorder, then we find the amplitude is 8.8. .8. So they are right in the middle. And we followed just them up. And the data we got now seems to show that they are going down to the number of PD, although they're motor-wise perfectly normal. So REM sleep behavior disorder is an ideal phenotype to investigate prodromal PD. And we look at other things. We just got data on the microbiome. The paper is just accepted. And it shows that the control is a particular number of bacteria in the gut, the Parkinson patient has changes in about 40, 40 different strata and the RBD patients in 30, but both already have nine bacteria groups which are identical and they are up. So RBD has a very similar pattern already as the Parkinson patient. So I think we have to leave uh, this conception that Parkinson's disease is a brain disorder. The gut is a huge brain, of course, and it's the interface with immunology. So it's a very, very interesting area for neurologists to move in. What you do is uh, you, you have to identify REM sleep behavior patients in a sleep laboratory. So the neurologist has the chance to collaborate with sleep experts. So sleep is moving into neurology much stronger than before. And REM sleep behavior patients then well offer the bioprobe, the stool, and that is sent to a high-class laboratory. We are not able to do this. And they just analyze the bacteria and they see there's a clear-cut difference already years before these patients start shaking or gets, getting slow. And then you can, what is another area of my research, you, you now try to create a prodromal animal model. So you don't go for the Nigra lesion, you lesion the area which is affected before, which is the locus ceruleus. So we just achieved a isolated lesion in the locus ceruleus in mice. Now you can study in mice what you can't study in humans. So far we have not achieved to find a biomarker which is progressing in parallel to the prodromal progression because you have to study something you don't see, right? So the patient looks normal. So you have to look at the patient very carefully and compare now different parameters as like imaging in brain or gut motility or maybe CSF levels of alpha-synuclein aggregates. And then you have to, to find finally a primary endpoint. And the primary endpoint then will be the key for the drug trials. And this is not something in the future. There are already four drugs which we think have a potential for disease modification. So the patients know this already. So the RBD, the REM sleep behavior disorder patients ask us, why don't we get these compounds? And then I have to answer, I'm sorry, we are not advanced enough with the methodology.